morning, everybody. Merry Christmas. God is good. And he's worthy. Aren't you glad? I'm so glad to be here today celebrating Christmas with my family. Amen? Amen. How often do we get to spend Christmas with all of our family? Oh, from everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like we stay at home, we do our little private thing, but to be able to come out on Christmas Day and to share the love of God, to share with one another, to just acknowledge that it's more than about a gift, except for the eternal gift, yes. but a gift like the, that material thing that can easily and, and will fade away. So we want to just remember uh, the reason for the season, which is Jesus, and yes. that we know that God got us. He's with us, he's for us, then who can be against us? Amen? Amen. Amen. So we want you all to stand because we're going to sing praises to the Lord. Amen. We want to get energized. Come on now. We, we feed off of y'all energy, so we need y'all energy to just, just stir us up, okay? Amen? Amen.
Hallelujah. Our scripture Amen. reading is going to be coming from the book of Luke. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 8, I'm um, talking chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. Let us read together. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a good thing. <laughs> and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the angel, a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Amen. May God add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his holy word. Now, this is a good time for all of us just to come together on one accord. I want you to stand where you're at. We're going to stand where we're at today, and we're just going to focus on God and all the things that he's done for you. Some of, some of our loved ones didn't make it all the way to this point, so we want to thank God. So at this time, just grab your neighbor by the hand and just stand where you're at, and we are going to just take it before the throne of grace. Hallelujah. to bring glad tidings of great joy. How many of you are joyous this morning knowing that we got a special gift, an eternal gift, as Deborah said, one that'll last for every, no receipt required. Because I don't know how many of you got a present that you was like, mm -hmm. When you have the gift of Christ, that present, that gift, that now, and that forever, that everlasting, is something that is just uncomparable. So I'm thanking the Lord today for just being able to worship with you. And we worship as a family, because I know we had to kind of rush and move some things around to be at service today. But I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord, in the fellowship of the saints. So as we bow our heads, let's just remember those who are, who've lost someone during this time. Let's remember Miss Jarrett and some of the other family members who have lost someone during this time. And let's just think about them, because I know we can't replace that loved one, but we most definitely, God, can send a comforter, Lord, to make you feel like they're with him and in his arms right now. So let's bow our heads together. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you right now, Lord, just humbly as we know how, Lord, just saying thank you, saying thank you. When I woke up early this morning to still... To, to, to just reflect on the goodness, Lord. I said, thank you for letting me just know you. 
Lord, and we're so glad right now that we know you, Lord, and know that nothing, nothing can compare. There's no gift on this world, Lord, that can compare to the sacrifice you gave in your son. Lord, so we're thanking you right now. We ask, Lord, that you just go with us, Lord, during this time. Lord, we're asking for special blessings for those who are without someone they love this season, Lord. Knowing that the memories are still there, Lord, and the pain someday will subside, Lord. But we ask you right now to send that amazing comforter that you have, Lord, to let them know that you're still there for them, Lord. For those who are under the weather this season, Lord, we ask you right now, Lord, heal them in the name of Jesus, Lord. For those who are traveling on the highways and byways to get to their loved ones, Lord, we're asking for traveling mercies, Lord. But we ask you for special protection for our houses of worship this morning, Lord, because we know that you're still alive, Lord, and you're still the great God bringing great joy to all of us, Lord. So we thank you, Lord, above all things, Lord, you still reign supreme, Lord. So I'm so glad and we're so glad today, Lord. So when they say glad tidings, Lord, that means something special. That means a hallelujah moment right now, Lord, as the highest praise, Lord. So we're thanking you, Lord. So as we still seek you, Lord, in all that we do, we ask like this not to be the last Sunday, Lord, but the start of Sunday something special in 2017, Lord. Lord, we ask in favor over all of our lives, blessings tremendously, Lord, but most definitely, Lord, we ask him that you walk with us, Lord, as we give more to you, Lord, because it's not enough, Lord. It's not enough just to show up. Lord, it's not enough because if you just showed up and didn't show out, Lord, we wouldn't know what to do. We'd be kind of mad. Lord, so we're asking right now, Lord, to just renew our commitment to you in the 2017 year, Lord. Lord, we ask him right now, Lord, in your name, in your name, provide that stability, Lord, provide that deliverance, provide that healing in your name, Lord, that, that, just that special something that we know that it was uniquely designed for us, Lord. That's how we know, Lord. Lord, we're going to stay studied in that word, Lord. We're going to stay prayed up. We're going to give more. We're going to love more. We're going to do more. We're going to bless more. We're going to be more about it in 2017, Lord. So we're thanking you right now. Bless this service. Bless our pastor, our shepherd, and his family, Lord. We ask that you continue to watch over them as he just walks in the path that you have in do, Lord. We thank you for that wonderful shepherd. That wonderful shepherd, Lord, let us be the sheep to stand behind him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. worship in the house of God today on Christmas Day. With churches under threat, we at Trinity have this forceful shield that is Jesus Christ that is protecting us. So I feel joy today. I don't know about any of you, but I feel joy today to be in the house of God celebrating his birthday. I don't want to be anywhere else. Let us sing joy to the world.
Good morning, Trinity. Once again, good morning, Trinity. God is good, and he is worthy. Aren't you glad? Jesus is the reason for the season. Merry Christmas to all of you. Matthew 121 says, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Amen. And a special good morning to our internet family and friends today. We're glad you are joining us. Today, as always, please remember those who are sick and shut in, especially today. Also remember those who have lost loved ones. Please give them a call, send them a text, let them know that you are thinking of them and that you are, they are in your prayers. Amen. Children's Church will not be held today in lieu of our Christmas service today. If your child does become restless, we ask that you please have a seat out in the narthex area where you can still see or hear our service. Also, please remember sanctuary etiquette. No food or drink is allowed in the sanctuary. Also, we ask that before you leave, please make sure the area where you are seated is free and clear of debris. Amen. Copies of the worship service are available for purchase. Please see any media, uh, media team member or Terry uh, Smith. The DVDs are available for a $5 purchase. We ask that you please give Terry about 15 minutes after service to have them available. I've just been made aware that the Compassion Center will be open today. Uh, I've been told that they have quite a few coats. If you know anyone who needs a coat, please visit the Compassion Center after service today from 1 to 2 p.m. If you have any questions, see Ms. Betty Like. Just uh, one save the date for January 1st. Uh, we will not be having the watch night service on the 31st of December. So that service will be combined with our regular Sunday service, January 1st, New Year's Day here at Trinity at 11 a.m. You can join us every Sunday here live and in living color here in Crystal Lake at Trinity Baptist Community Church. Our service starts at 11 a.m. You can also see a rev on the internet, tbcci.org. Or you can see past episodes also on um, the internet at YouTube. On radio, Sunday evenings at 7 p.m. on WYLL 1160 on your dial, Rev will be teaching life lessons. Next Sunday, Stacy Hatchett will be doing announcements. So if you have any information that you'd like to announce during service, please get that information to her before Saturday 12 noon at tbccianouncements at gmail.com, not .org, it is .com. Trinity TBCCI announcements at gmail.org. At this time, we'd like to welcome any visitor or returning friend. Please stand at this time so that we may welcome you again. We're all home, everybody, so, oh, we, thank you. Please remain standing. An usher will come by and give you an information card. Please take it uh, and fill it out. Please place it in the uh, collection plate as it comes by. Thank you for joining us here today. We hope to see you again real soon. Thought for the week, find your joy. There are many things that can make you feel joy, but true joy comes first by knowing Jesus. Matthew 6 and 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. We come to the kingdom through Jesus Christ. Jesus is joy, eternal life, salvation. He understands us and supports us. And among other things, Jesus is love. Now, some things we think will give us joy, but not really. The true joy just come from Jesus. Take a walk with him. He will steer you in the right direction. Like a plant, Jesus is the water for our, our soil. If we go to him, he will water us often so that we can all blossom and beautify his kingdom. Today is as good a time as any. If you do not know Jesus, please open up your book, talk to someone, let them tell you about his loving kindness. Today is his birthday, but it could be your birthday too as the rebirth of your soul. So once again, find your joy.
We are happy to be here in the Lord's house here at Trinity Baptist Community Church. Our pastor is Bishop Dr. Michael J. Love. Trinity is a teaching church of God's holy word. We touch, we share, we love, and we care. We thank God for the opportunity to praise and worship him. When Bishop Love opens the doors to the church, please feel free to give your hearts to Christ and your hands in fellowship to Trinity. Everyone, as we always say, please have a blessed week. And also today, especially, please bless someone today. You can do that before the close of day today. Give them a hug, give them a call, hug somebody you haven't hugged in a while, let them, give them a smile, let them feel that you care about them, amen. Everybody, please be blessed. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. It's so good to be in the Lord's house on this beautiful day. Uh, God has just blessed us in so many ways. I want to add my voice to uh, welcoming each and every one here on this, uh, this gorgeous Sunday morning. Our internet congregation joining us live. We're thankful that you're with us on this beautiful day. Uh, we got so many great things going on, and we thank God for it. We, we, we were blessed just this past uh, couple days. Uh, uh, it just made mention of, but we were blessed to receive over 250 winter coat and jacket items from this from the city, so that we can be able to bless into the lives. Hopefully, no one that's in, within our reach will go without without a warm coat and a beautiful coat. See those beautiful coats? He just got them hung up in the, in the compassion center. So I made a special request on Miss Betty and the team. They've agreed to come back after service and open up for an hour if if uh, if we can be a blessing in any way with a coat jacket i mean uh, any size adults teens children uh, the place is full back there now and we're and we're blessed to be able to give it to you there's a there is no charge so we thank god for for the opportunity to be a blessing on this beautiful day uh now and i know miss carrie i know there, there's some there's still some gifts downstairs from last i want to thank the giving tree ministry team last sunday for blessing uh, being able being a blessing of so many children and we gave out a lot of gifts but there are still gifts downstairs miss carrie saying so if you if you got a young one here and uh, and it's uh, it's not too late for christmas it is christmas come on down and see our team downstairs and in the banquet hall and uh, we would love to be able to bless you there and then you can head on over to the compassion center and we'll double bless you on this day if, if there's a if there's an opportunity or need amen Amen. Make sure I'm still got a, still I got family in here now. We're still awake, aren't we? Yeah, God is good. God is good. We will have a very special service on next Sunday morning as we combine our normal watch night service into the Sunday morning service. What that means is that we're going to have some time with testimonials and concert of prayer, uh, you know, along with the praise and worship and music, and it's going to be it's going to be a power packed. Uh, uh, worship service on that Sunday morning. We're going to roll it in and just in, enjoy that day, that morning. So uh, don't, don't stay up too late on Saturday night. <laughs> I want your eyes open when we come into worship on Sunday morning. It's going to be fun. It's going to be, yeah, yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> stay with the pastor. It's a good day. Has the Lord blessed anybody this, this week? Really, has he done something good for you, worthy of some praise? Come on, give the Lord some praise. Come on, Deacon. Where, 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 where the Deacon Smith from? Come on, Deacon Smith. Uh -oh. Get a little feedback. Not here. I think it's on the drum. We're going to worship God without giving. <laughs> well, other ushers come forward, please. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, Hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Amen. Aren't you glad God is living today? That he will protect and that he will provide for us what we need him. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, to commune with you. We ask that you just that you just move in this place today, Lord God. Lord God, we have not because we ask not, Lord God. Right now, Lord God, we come laying out our petitions before you today, Lord God, knowing, Lord God, that you are here and that you will do what you said you would do. And Lord God, for this time, Lord God, where we come to give what is already yours, Lord God, I ask that you would just convict those hearts, Lord God, that 
are deciding whether to give or not, Lord God. Let them know, Lord God, that you are the provider, Lord God. That, Lord God, that you will open up windows of heaven and you will pour out blessings that we will not have room enough to receive. So let's be obedient today and give what is already to God, whether it's our tithes, our offerings, or our, our gifts that God has blessed us with. Let us give those things back to him and watch God move in the area of giving and providing. He said that he would, and he's proved that he would. So right now I'm asking, Lord God, that you would just move in this place, Lord God, and that we will be what you have called us to be, Lord God. Let us not be selfish with giving, Lord God. Let us bless others, Lord God, that you would use what we give to multiply and to bless others with. We thank you for this time of giving, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen.
with somebody in the house ought to be able to say amen today. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Give him some praise. In the house. Beautiful. Thank God for the worship. If you would turn with me once again to the book of Luke. Book of Luke. Uh, today we're focusing our attention on chapter 2. Let's spend just a few moments and two life lessons together. As we take a look at the familiar episode in chapter 2, drilling down to verses 15 through 20. Luke chapter 2, 15 through 20. We read in uh, our scripture reading together the, uh, the lead into that and from verses, I believe, 8 through 14. And I want to focus for us to read our time of reading together on verses 10 and 11, just to set the stage. Luke 2, verses 10 and 11 for our reading we'll have on the screen in the King James translation, focusing our attention on 15 through 20. If you have that in your Bible, just say amen. Amen. And if you don't mind standing with me, let's read this together. These two verses, 10 and 11, once again. And it reads, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, as you take your seat. Uh, just sermon two in our mini-series, The Promises and Blessings of God. The Promises and Blessings of God. It's, as we read, as we spent some time last Sunday talking about the, the episode with, uh, uh, in chapter one of Luke that's recorded, in which uh, Mary and Elizabeth come together, that Mary, Elizabeth and, and her husband, Zacharias, gets the, get an angelic visitation. Uh, proclaiming to them that uh, the barren, Elizabeth who's barren shall bear a child. And the power of that message uh, sends Zacharias, the priest, into a, a state of questioning and disbelief, and the Lord silences him. And once, when, when Elizabeth gets that blessing, that, that message, uh, it sends her into a state of joy. And then uh, some six months later, Mary gets a message from Gabriel, the, the angelic messenger, that she will be, she will have a virgin, she will be with child. She asks the question, how can this be? Uh, Zacharias asks the question, how should I know this? And uh, the, two, the, the two mothers, the, the cousins now come together, and the baby leaps in the womb, the baby of Elizabeth leaps in the womb when they come in contact in the presence of uh, of the baby in Mary's womb, Jesus. Uh, it's a forerunner. It lays the groundwork for what is taking place because now we fast forward. Uh, the, the census has been demanded and uh, they're going to Bethlehem and uh, where they shall be caught on the, along the family tree. And uh, during this season, uh, the Bible tells us in this second chapter of Luke that the, an the angels appear unto the shepherds uh, in a field this is powerful and significant, church family, in, in, in a number of ways. But think about this for a moment. You have had Old Testament prophets have been proclaiming of hundreds of years ago that there will be, Micah said, there will be a child born in Bethlehem of Ephrata, uh, who shall be the coming Messiah. Uh, Isaiah talked about, unto us a child is born, son is given as he proclaimed, as he had pronounced, even during Babylonian, Babylonian captivity. But now for 400 years or so, the prophets, uh, there have been no prophets, and the Lord has been silent. For 400 years, there's been no word from the Lord about all the prophecies that have been proclaimed. And then, just at the right time, just in the nick of time, just in the fullness of time, the scriptures tell us the angels now appear. And, and, and who do they appear to? The text tells us to the shepherds who are minding their sheep at night. So let's pick up the storyline. They've it's said to them, as they have appeared before the shepherds, uh, in 14 it says, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace 
among men of whom he is well pleased to amplify it says men of goodwill and of his favor let me pick up 15 15 and 16 say in the amplified king james will be on the screen when the angels went away from them in the heaven into heaven the amplified says the shepherds said one to another let us go over to bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass which the lord has made known unto us so they went with haste and by searching found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. One of two life lessons. The first one that I jotted down to share with you is this. The believer's response to God's detailed promises should be an enlarged kingdom vision, an inspired faith, and immediate action. I need to bring this on up to you today. When, when God speaks to you, God has spoken in his word. He had proclaimed to them over the centuries that indeed there is a Messiah that is to come. He's shown them that, that the, it is being fulfilled in their presence, that Micah had proclaimed that indeed he would be born in Bethlehem. And now the angels are proclaiming they're coming to shepherds. They're coming to the very symbol of the good shepherd who is to come, and those who are caring for the flock, those who are who are defenseless and in need of direction and protection. He comes to the shepherds and proclaims to them that indeed this promise has now been fulfilled. Now I need you to notice he lets them know as when, when he talks about it, when we read, when we read these earlier verses, he, 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 he lets them know that don't be afraid. Don't, don't be startled at the, at the appearance of the angelic host here because it is now God doing what he has said he would do down through the years. He says, now here's some symbols for you. Here's some signs for you because I know that you're startled by this thing. He says, when you go to Bethlehem, you shall find a child. And uh, the way, the, the sign will be that he will be in swaddling clothing. The sign will be that he is in a manger. The sign will be that he will be with, with, with Joseph and with Mary and you shall find him just as, a, just as it's been proclaimed by Isaiah 7, 14 and Micah 5, 5, 2. But that child shall be something that is unique to all of humanity and all of the world. He will be, he will be to the glory of God. He will be, he will be the Messiah, the Christ, who has become the, the Savior who has been promised by God Almighty. Now, 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 when God starts fulfilling promises in your life, I need to come on up to the day. When God starts laying out his, his written promise and then starts touching your life spiritually with fulfilling, dropping down underneath of that and saying, now, this is how his written promise can be fulfilled in your daily activity. This is how God's going to do something special in your life that fits into the plan and purpose, the big picture plan and purpose. I'm coming over here. This is how God's going to take the corporate message that he has for you and then drill it down to where you live and breathe. You know, down there where things are, are, are difficult in your life, down there where the fear might be welling up in your life. I'm, I need to talk to somebody. Do I need to go over here? When, when, when God says, I'm taking the big picture promise that I've said, I'm showing it to you in Jesus Christ. Now, because you can believe that and you can see me fulfill that, I'm able to deal with the small things that are going on in your life. It might feel like it's overwhelming to you today. He says, you can trust me with the details of your living. And what he does for the shepherds, he does for us. He comes down and the first thing he does, he says, now, let me expand, let, let me expand your kingdom vision. Uh, because when you look at your circumstances, on, I, I'm preaching to somebody, I'm not going to be long, but let me just take a moment. He says, when, when, when you start looking at your situations, you start looking at your circumstances in life, the human thing is, is begin to weigh the size of your issues over and against the size of your ability to handle your issues. Am, am I preaching? Am, am I in the house today? And what God wants you to know is ah, when you come to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. That baggage that you're trying to carry into the present and into the future, you don't need to carry that any longer. That doesn't have your name on it. Or it, it, it belongs. Give it on up to the Lord and set it on his altar and learn from that thing so that you don't repeat the same old mistakes in the future. He says, but now you're a new creature. Now God has a new purpose for your life. Now God is plugging you into a plan that is kingdom and divine in his nature. And so what God does is, he begins to expand 
your vision. Am I talking to you? Well, you might look at the situation and say, that's, that's more than I can handle. That's bigger than anything I can deal with. And the, in your humanity, you immediately say, now I, fear wells up. And he says, God, I, I can't deal with that. And then God comes along and says, yeah, that's true. If you try to handle it by yourself. But now that Christ is in the formula, now that he's the glue that holds all things together, now he's given you a promise that he's going to make all things work out for good and to God's glory, then now you have a different mind. You should have a different mindset. Your vision needs to be enlarged to recognize that God is able to handle anything that you're facing today. So he, am I helping anybody? So he enlarges your vision. And then he comes by and he inspires your faith. He said to the shepherds, this thing has happened. And you need to believe that the God who's been silent for 400 years is now speaking to you. Wait, wait, wait a minute. The God who's been, you know, sometimes you've been in this journey and, and you might have had a few weeks or a few months or a few years and it feels like you haven't heard from God. And it sounds like you're saying, God, where are you? Why are you silent? I'm down here wrestling. I'm down here struggling. I'm down here trying to deal with my stuff. And I don't, I don't feel your presence. I don't hear your voice. I don't see your hand operating in my journey. And it feels like you've been silent, Lord. And God shows up and says, I haven't been silent. I've always been active. I'm shaping circumstances around you. Oh, this, this is going to help somebody. I know this is helping me. I'm shaping the circumstances around you and getting the blessings ready for you while I'm getting you ready for the blessing. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Talk to me like you know what I'm talking about. And so he heads and he speaks to the angelic host, speaks to the shepherds and says, this thing that God has promised is happening. Enlarge your vision to see the possibility. Enlarge your faith to step into the reality. And finally, he says, now that your vision and your faith have been activated, I need you to move your feet. <laughs> oh, oh, wait a minute. You, you got to do something. You can't sit back and let the Lord just open up the windows and pour out the blessings and, open, and, and say, okay, Lord, I'm not doing anything to receive it. I need you to go and see this blessing that God has opened up in front of you. And he says the same thing to us. You're worried? You're fearful? Let me take care of that fear and open up your vision. Let me instill faith where your fear is operating so that you recognize that God is at large and in charge. And he's got all of this in his arms. He's handling it. And now once you get excited about the reality of your new vision and your new faith walk, now I need you to step out on faith. I need you to take a step toward your blessing. Oh, that was good. I, God, I need you to take a step toward your blessing. I'm coming over here. Somebody in the house, God is saying, I need you to take a step toward your blessing. When the angels went away, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. They verbalized it. They influenced, they spoke, they spoke encouragement and faith and hope into each other's lives. Don't miss this. You, you, you want to know if, you're, if, if your words have impact? You, you want to know if you can, you can change, you can touch somebody's lives who may feel downtrodden and beaten down and fearful and worried? Uh, when God lifts you up out of the fear mode and, and sets your feet firmly on the faith mode, then you need to share that thing with somebody. You need to verbalize it. You need to say, let us go see, because God has promised. And then the next text says, 
in the Amplified, so they went with haste. I don't know about you, but I tell you when, <laughs> and this is, this is not necessarily something that you can just come, you, you know, you can just walk instantly in your faith and, and step into. Sometimes it takes some of us who are a little more hard-headed, a little like experience. We need to experience a little bit of the blessing so that our feet get quicker to step towards the next blessing that's coming. Am I, is, am I by myself? Now, for those of, for those of us who, who have stepped out of the boat, like Peter would say, and stepped on the water, stepped onto something that me, looks like you got no business stepping on, but the Lord says step on it. Amen. And when you stepped, you found that he had a, this interesting way of changing water into something that is more solid and I'm stepping on and, 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 and making all that work out way above my pay grade. When that, when that has happened to you, once or repeatedly, it's amazing how it can have an impact on your vision and your faith. So that the next opportunity when something comes up and God speaks to you, you hear his voice, it's consistent with his message, it fits within the, the giftedness he's given you, it fits within the pattern of how he's directing your life and your, dire and, and, and your journey, you will find yourself, like the shepherds, you will find yourself, the text says, making haste. The, 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 the Greek says, you will find yourself running. You, you will step out and run toward God's blessing because you know God has something that he's about to do that's, that's marvelous, that's, that's, you, that, I mean, that's just tremendous. And so our response to God's detailed promises should be an enlarged kingdom vision and inspired faith and immediate action. Get out there and get your blessing from the Lord. Get, get, get it. Let me pick up 17 to 20. I won't be long. 17 says, and when they saw, you're going to let me preach a little bit? I know it's Christmas Day. Y'all already shared the gifts, didn't you? Uh -huh. Okay, if you haven't, we get the gift sharing. We get the gift sharing. And when they saw it, they made known what had been told them concerning this child. Amplified, 18 says, and all who heard it were astounded and marveled at what the shepherds told them. But Mary was keeping within herself all these things, these sayings, weighing and pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all things they had heard and seen, just as it had been told them. Here's the last thing I want to share with you. The believer's response to God's delivered blessings. Our first response is to his detailed promises. Now to his delivered blessings should be spiritual reflection, Mary, strength and commitment, and spirit-filled praise. Uh, just look at the, the unfolding. It's a simple set of passages, but it's so powerful. The angels have appeared to them, given them the powerful message, told them, go and see. This is to the glory of God. As they're going to see, an angelic host appears, and they're showing up doing what they do. They praise God. It's almost as if I'm giving you some extra reinforced, uh, uh, reinforced uh, uh, reinforcement of the blessing. Uh, I don't know if the shepherds needed it, but after 400 years, maybe they did. You know, these generations have passed, generations have passed. You know, the tradition has passed on down. Nobody's hearing from God. You know, is he mad at us? You know, generations have gone, haven't heard a word from the prophet. Promised Messiah is supposed to be coming. Nobody's seeing him. And now they run, and when they get to, the, when they get to Bethlehem, it is as they have said, as, as the Lord has said. And when the, they see the baby lying in the manger, and they found Mary and Joseph, can you imagine, can you imagine what that must have felt like to see God's promise explode into their lives, fulfilled in their seeing and their witness? I, I don't quite know how to put, to put our arms around the magnitude of something like that. Uh, I don't know how to do that. You can't, you can't 
you can't wrap your arms around anything like the appearance of Jesus. But maybe you can drill down to something that God has done in, in your life. Perhaps you can reflect back on some moment when the Lord has, has redirected your path and when you looked back over it, you, you, you saw, well, now, Lord, if I had a step that way, things would have really gone bad for me. But because you, you blessed me and you sent me that way, I not only stepped away from sure enough tragedy, I stepped into the avenue of an overwhelming blessing over here. And I didn't have anything to do. All I did was follow where you led me. Maybe it was one of those moments when you were, you were dealing with a financial or health-related thing, and, and you saw God, you know, you, you, needed, you, 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 you needed just somebody to step in because it was way beyond your ability to handle, and you had given up all hope that this thing was going to work out for you. Maybe, maybe it was... Maybe it was job-related or housing-related or financially-related and, you know, things that you can put your hands on like that. And you knew that you couldn't, you couldn't make it to tomorrow if you didn't have some help from some place. And just in the nick of time, just at the right moment, just when, when, when God, God had promised it, somebody sent something through the mail or somebody stopped by your door or somebody said, I've got a blessing. The Lord just prompted me to come on by and give you a little something. I don't even know who you are, but I saw you walking down, and, and I just had this for you, and God said, give it to you. And you just have to sit there marveling. Huh? How is it that God knew exactly what I needed and gave it to me just when I needed it and provided it from somebody that I didn't even know? How does that happen? It's the favor of God. Yeah. It's the favor. Now, when, when those types of things happen, a, a few things happen to me. I, I can reflect. I can, I can, I can connect with, with Mary and the shepherds on here. Like Mary, my tendency will be, you know, after I get my shout on, my tendency will be to reflect on, okay, what just happened here? And how did that just happen? And why did that just happen? And Lord, what is it that you want me to learn from this? Because this may not be the last time I face something like this. But the difference in my facing a similar episode in the future is that I'm different now. That's, that's the thing. You have shown me. You've enlarged my vision. You have inspired my faith. And I've stepped out, and I, you, you've proven yourself to me. So that now when I, when I face the new challenge in my life, on, I'm talking to somebody. You know, when I lost that job the first time, I felt like the world was crashing in all around me, and I didn't know what I was going to do. I, I was ready to give up. And because I was a, a babe in my face, Lord, you just came up underneath of me and scooped me up in your arms and said, I've got you here. And now that you show me that you will scoop me up in your arms when I, when, when I find myself falling and I face the next opportunity, then I'm going to step out and say, well, wait a minute. My God has already proven himself to me. He told me that I'm his child. He, he told me that he's going to take care of me. He told me to cast all his cares on me because he's a God who cares for me. Rather than fearing and fretting, and falling down, I'm going to put it all up into his arms and say, Lord, I'm yours. And you have got the answer to my need. And when I see him fulfill that promise, when I see him provide that blessing, when, when he goes above and beyond anything I can imagine or think or come up with in my own mind. So when, he, when he blesses me open the window style, you know, the kind of thing where I don't even have room, my arms can't handle all of it. It's like the window opens up and he just pulls out all this stuff on me and all I can do is fall back in the blessing that God has given me. When God has shown me that time and time again, then the next time I find myself in the struggle, in the midst of a, tri of, of a trial in my journey, I'm going to lean on the God who's already proven who he is. And that he is faithful. I'm, I, I got to go. So, 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 what it does for me is it, it, it puts me in a moment of reflection because I want to I wanna 
meditate on it. I want to I wanna chew on this blessing a little bit. I, I don't want it to go down too fast. I want it to stay right here where I can get all the taste out of this blessing that God has in it. You, you, you know how it is when somebody's done a good meal. I don't, I don't want to eat that thing too fast because you didn't put too much love into it. And it's tasting way too good. And I, I don't want it to just go down my throat. I want it to stay right on my taste buds. <laughs> Am I getting y'all hungry yet? So I can grab every morsel of the taste that's in this thing. That's, that's the meditation side of God's blessing. Mary said, I got to I gotta think about this. I heard the angel, I got to think about this. I, I, there's, there's much deeper meaning in this. The shepherds, while thinking about it, got, it strengthened them in their commitment. And these guys who were alienated and ostracized and looked down on by uh, the society during their time, now go running out like they're the kingfish. They're committed. It's like, wait a minute. The Lord, the angels have spoken to us. They didn't come speak to the government. They didn't come speak to the priests. Are y'all, are y'all catching this? They didn't, they didn't look for all the dignitaries. They didn't look for all the folk who had all the important fame, fortune, and all that. They came down to the lowly shepherds. And it strengthened their commitment. And finally, when the Lord does that, he strengthens our walk of faith. Uh, and they're letting us know that when we step out into this world setting here, and the world's telling us a whole bunch of mess, that we can trust his word over and against the mess the world's trying to, the mess edge the world is trying to give to us. Then it just, it, it strengthens our praise. It, 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 it sp- fills us with spirit-filled praise. And so the shepherd returned, it says, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, just as it has been told to them. You got to share that blessing. You got to give God his praise. And you need to be praising so somebody who may be at that stage of the journey can hear about the good news of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Why? So that they might come and accept him as Lord and Savior if they're outside the family realm or if they're inside the family realm and yet their walk is weak because they, 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 in, they, you know, the flesh and the, and the spirit are battling in, in this journey here, and the world is constantly beating them down and telling them a message that's trying to confuse them. They need to hear the truth of God's word and the power of your witness to be able to tell them just how good God is. They need to know that. And when you, here's the beauty of it. The beauty of it is this is what's in it for you. When you speak that praise out, to those who may be struggling in some, some facet of their journey, it's an amazing thing in how it comes back and reinforces you and strengthens you in your walk. Have you noticed that? It makes, when I start praising God, it makes me feel stronger. It makes me feel better. It, it, it lets me know that I'm his child and that when I go out in this journey out here, I'm never alone. And in the midst of that, I can stand tall, and I'm not fearing what the world will do to me, knowing that my God is able. Is he able, church? Is he able? It's Christmas morning. Is he able, church? It's Christmas morning. Do you have some praise in you this morning? It is Christmas morning. Can you get up on your feet and give him about 30 seconds with a sure enough Christmas praise? This isn't holiday praise. This is Christmas praise. We're not struggling for the reason why we're here today. We know why we're here today. And if there's nobody else want to worship him on Sunday morning when it's Christmas, then God's got some folk in the house who will come on out on Sunday morning, recognizing that the gift, are much, uh, the gift from God is much greater than any gift you can put under a tree. It's Christmas, and it's all about Christ. Father, we thank you today. We bless you today, Lord. We praise you today. We glorify you today, Lord. And we thank you for giving us this opportunity to worship you in the house of prayer. Thank you for keeping us safe, Lord, and providing for all of our needs. While the world's out there fearing what may be happening, what may be coming, what things may be going on, we know that you are in charge. You're sovereign, Lord. Nothing happens that doesn't filter through your fingers, and you protect your children. 
And so, Lord, as you have strengthened us in your word today, send us forth with words of worship and praise that we might bless into the lives of each and every one we come in contact with. As we gather around the table and around the Christmas tree, sharing our love and sharing our gifts and, and sharing our food, communing together, Lord, be in the midst. Make your presence known, Lord, so that we always are aware that you are the reason for the season. We're not going to let our lips be silent when we stand out in front of this world, Lord. We're, we're not going to shrink back. We're not going to isolate ourselves. We're not going to let folk tell us who, who we are. We're going to only tell, only believe who you say we are, and we're going to say Merry Christmas to each and every one that we come in contact with. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the strength. Thank you for the faith, Lord. Thank you for the call that you have on our lives. It is in Jesus' holy and precious name that we pray, giving you thanks, Lord. Let all God's people in the house say amen. Hey, give the Lord some praise. Thank you, Lord. We're going to open up the doors of the church. Of our new members, if we have some new members directors who will come, we, as we open up the doors of the church, our tradition here is to give an opportunity. We're never going to leave God's house without giving an opportunity to become a part of the Trinity family, the family of Christ. If you're here and the Lord is speaking to your heart, it's a simple step of coming down front and let us welcome you as a new member on your Christian experience or as a candidate for baptism. The Lord is touching you. You're ready for a new beginning. Then won't you take that step today and let us take the information to welcome you home. The doors of the church are open. You hear it? good. Miss Karen, this is a caring moment. Are we still good? Is there any children that we can bless for Christmas? Uh, we still have gifts downstairs in the banquet hall. Go there first. And then the Compassion Center will be open. Children, teens, and adults, we, have, we are blessed with clothing and especially a huge blessing of winter coat that we love to be able to bless you with. Uh, join us in the Compassion Center. Amen? Amen? With our heads bowed, with our eyes closed, and our hearts humbled before the living God. 
lifting our hands in praise. Mm. Mm. Now unto him, who is able to keep you and me from falling and present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, power, now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let all God's people say amen. Holy. Somebody you. 